Welcome to part 4 of the history of Final Fantasy. In this part, we will cover the next three games in the series, Final Fantasy X, XI, and XII. Due to the timing of Final Fantasy IX's release mere months before the release of the PlayStation 2, it seemed obvious that IX would be the last 32-bit game in the series. It also seemed obvious, from the immense popularity of 7, 8, and 9, that the relationship between Square and Sony would continue, with Final Fantasy X being developed for their PlayStation 2 console. The jump in technology between the PlayStation and PlayStation 2 formed a large part in the aspects that made Final Fantasy X. Due to advances in graphic technology, the differences between in-game graphics and FMV graphics were much lesser making the lines blurred between the two, and allowing greater continuity in storytelling. Furthermore, no longer did the game require separate maps for areas like towns and the overworld. Everything is seamlessly integrated, and due to decreases in load times, even traveling between regions is virtually seamless. The jump from CD-ROM technology to DVD-ROM technology also allowed for a longer quest to be present on only one disc, as opposed to the multiple discs gamers had to become used to during the PlayStation era, and voice acting allowed for a wide range of emotions to be portrayed by the game characters. Final Fantasy X also features tweaks to gameplay, modifying the ATB system that had been in use since 4 into the CTB, or Conditional Time Battle System, which allowed gamers not only to make choices unencumbered by time restraints, but also to see the order of future turns and strategize accordingly. The leveling system is also revamped into the Sphere Grid System, which allows players to level their characters' abilities on their own and customize them greatly. For example, if a player is unsatisfied with a character's role as a white mage, they may choose to move them on the sphere grid towards a more combat-oriented role, or vice versa. The plot of the game involves an attack on the world by a creature known as Sin, supposedly mankind's punishment for wicked deeds, and the resistance of it by a wide variety of characters led by former sports star Titus. The game's narrative actually starts off late into the story and then jumps back to the beginning, giving gamers an early taste of what's to come, something similar to Capcom's PlayStation RPG Breath of Fire 4. The game was a huge success, being the first PlayStation 2 game to sell 2 million copies and also the first to sell 4 million copies. The game received almost universal praise for the story, gameplay, characters, and voice acting, with criticisms being few and far between. The game received the enviable score of 39 from Japanese gaming magazine Famitsu, being only the seventh game in the publication's long history to receive this near-perfect score, and in a reader poll, Famitsu readers chose Final Fantasy X as the best video game of all time. Final Fantasy X's popularity and praise was so great that it led to a direct sequel being made, Final Fantasy X II, the first time a Final Fantasy game got a sequel, not counting a Japanese film that was made as a sequel to V. I'll talk more about the sequel in a future episode, but I mention it here for another reason. It would be a good holdover for those who chose to skip the next game in the series. The next game, Final Fantasy XI, would be the most radical departure yet. Rather than being a narrative-based, single-player RPG, it was an MMORPG, or Massively Multiplayer Online RPG. Requiring a hard drive, online connection, and monthly fee to pay, it's easy to see why some gamers chose to ignore it and focus on Final Fantasy X-2 instead. Final Fantasy XI, in many ways, is a typical MMO, with a loosely told storyline revolving around quests to complete, usually cooperatively with other players. Like most MMOs, there is a heavy focus on character creation and growth, and players operate on servers called worlds. Players can move their characters from one server to another, though this requires payment of a fee to Squaresoft. 